you know, when I do a breast surgery, my brain is not working much. My hands are working more. Okay. And uh, similarly face this, but yeah. in rhinoplasty, in every step, you have to think and yeah. you have to be fully concentrated on the surgery. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Rhinoplasty Podcast with me, Dr. Cameron McIntosh. We're in season three and coming to you live from Berlin at the IMR His Global Masters Meeting. And uh, I have somebody on the show today who I've been trying to actually get hold of for the past three years, but he's a difficult man to tie down because he is extremely busy with lots of things. But it's an absolute honor and a delight to have Prof. Nazim Sirx with us today. Yeah. Prof, thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting. It's a pleasure for me. So, Prof, you really need no introduction. I mean, people from all around the world know of your reputation. But tell us a bit how you ended up becoming the president of ISAPS from living in Istanbul, if I'm, if I'm correct. When did this whole journey start for you? Oh, well, actually, uh, I can say uh, by chance or... You know, of course, you know, I spend it a lot of time, you know, for ISAPs, for education. Uh, I was an associate professor in Istanbul University. After I finished my uh, residency, I worked another 10 years there. I mainly uh, was doing uh, microsurgery, microsurgical reconstruction on those years. I'm talking about the years between 1990 to 2002. And uh, then I left the university and uh, I found that rhinoplasty is the the most delicate aesthetic operation. Yeah. I like to do microsurgery. You know, for me, the rhinoplasty, you know, fit the, my microsurgical experience. Yes, yes. So that's why probably I you know, moved to rhinoplasty. In the beginning of my uh, private practice, I was doing everything, but I didn't like the other operations like yeah. liposuction yeah. or abdominoplasty by the contouring. They were two rough surgeries for okay. me. And, uh, right. you know, I wanted to do more delicate work like uh, rhinoplasty, yeah. uh, like microsurgery. And uh, rhinoplasty was that operation. Wow. And I believe it is probably one of the most complicated operation surgery on the human body yeah yeah you know because it's everything you know depend is depending on the uh, decisions of the surgeon and there are hundreds of the surgical techniques and you have to decide what you have to do on that specific case and yeah every case is yeah. different you know that yeah. that's why this surgery is so so such a challenge fun, challenge and yeah. fun Wow. Yeah, I enjoy doing uh, this operation because, you know, when I do a breast surgery, my brain is not working much. My hands are working more. Okay. And uh, similarly face this, but yeah. in rhinoplasty, in every step, you have to think and yeah. you have to be fully concentrated on the surgery, yeah. not to make mistake because it's a surgery that the, you make a maneuver, you make a motion that interplace the other place yeah. other things and you know you have to think about the next steps now in turkey if i'm not mistaken like it's it's possibly the center of rhinoplasty in the world there's so many turkish surgeons that operate yeah. there um what concerns you with this kind of new upsurge of so many people doing rhinoplasty well uh, you know actually i can say that uh, you know we uh, i had a good influence in the Turkish rhinoplasty evolution. Yeah. Also, there are some other uh, doctors from the ENT world too, also. You know, in Turkey, science, uh, medicine is pretty high. Yes. And uh, why rhinoplasty is uh, in such a high level? Uh, the first thing is that the best, you know, students becomes doctor and the best of the best becomes plastic surgeon. Yes. This is the one thing. Second thing is there's a lot of rhinoplasty cases. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, we have beak noses and uh, Anatolia, the mainland of Turkey, is a mixture of the civilizations. Yes. 
That's the reason that, uh, you know, we can operate different type of noses. Yes. For example, in the east south part of the Turkey, the, you know, the patients has more thicker skin and, you know, the less projected tip. When you go to north, there's large arms. You know, when you go to west, they are mixed with the Greeks. And, you know, we operate all type of the noses. Yeah. Also, there are a group of people who came from the Middle uh, Asia, you know, the Asian features. Yeah. Even we can we operate that kind of patients. So that gives an experience to the surgeons. And uh, then uh, since there is a, such a... Uh, big amount of the patients, you know, then they they can practice more. And uh, so Turkish uh, rhinoplasty level became... Right. So good. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Prof, I've got two things I wanted to ask you about on, like, the mental side on rhinoplasty. Um, the one is you do a whole lot of revision cases. So how are you handling those... Because I would, it's a generalization, but most of the revisions, there's some more mental problems possibly than most in primaries. How do you manage to handle those patients? But how do you also manage the stress within yourself? Because I, I think it's something we don't speak about too much with rhinoplasty, but it's quite a high st stressful operation. Like you, you, you get something that's a millimeter wrong. Yeah. There's a problem in, in a breast augment. A millimeter is brilliant, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's so. I'm very interested to hear what your thoughts are on that. Well, you know, uh, when you get experience, when you get a non-surgeon, and when you charge more, I will say, you know, uh, you cannot make mistake, yes. and the life is getting harder and harder for me. I remember, right. you know, I will, I will, <laughs> I will talk very, you know, honestly. Yes, please. Twenty, twenty-five years ago. The noses I did was, was they were decent, and you know, even the bad results I had many bad results. Yeah, as all we did, we yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. You know, the patients were not complaining on those years. Yes. Now the patients became very, very demanding. Yes. The, and the, it made our life much harder right now. So you know, I cannot you make. I, we can. I cannot make a mistake. But is that because our us as colleagues? or putting a false impression out on how good our surgeries are, or not? Well, of course, the, there's a big influence, big effect of yeah. uh, social media. Yeah. Because everybody is showing amazing results <laughs> on the uh, social media, yes. and also, you know, probably many photoshopped results, yes. and, you know, filter results that, you know, people think that the, this surgery will give always an you know, outstanding result and, yes. uh, you know, without any yes. flaw. Actually, I can tell you that probably I have never done a perfect nose in my yes. life. You know, you can find a, you know, flaw in any case. Yes. In, like <laughs> so, so because I sometimes see a patient and I look at their profile on WhatsApp or they send me and then the patient walks in the door and I'm like, that's completely different yeah. to what they, they've they've morphed their noses to. Hey? Yeah. Wow. Well, actually, the, the, there is one uh, good thing about that. You know, this stress motivated us to make a m more, you know, perfection. Yes. To do more perfect yes. results. Yes. Because the patients are so demanding. So I'm so scared, so scared to do a mistake. Yeah. So I spent more time Imagine when I first started to do this surgery, my average operating time was like one and a half hours. Yeah. Now, minimum two and a half hours. Wow. Wow. After doing the amazing. Five, uh, after doing five thousand yes. cases, because you know I'm I'm so now uh, obsessive at the moment really? for the result because I know that it's gonna return me back if the patient see, you know, very minuscule deformity yes. on the nose, they, they, they are complaining. Yeah. Particularly, you know, when you become a non-surgeon, they expect a perfect result yeah, yeah. from you. Okay, now how do you manage your own personal stress? How, what do you do when you're not doing rhinoplasty? I mean, what are some of the things you go and get your mind away from all the surgery? Well, my own yes. complications, you see. No, 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 for you, 
like being in this high stress job of being known around the world for doing complex mm-hmm. revision cases, you must be able to do something when you're not working and you go, I don't know, you go into the mountains or how, how do you manage that stress of your life? Well, you know, actually, uh, I don't do too, too much stress, but I'm much more selective in, in, yeah. you know, in, yeah. in, in uh, you know, in getting to patients, in selecting to patients, yeah. you know, what I do selection and I always talk, uh, you know, uh, not promising, you know. I I don't give any promise. Yes, yes, I yes, I yes. even to, uh, you know talk to patient with the you know more uh, decent results. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, you know if, then uh, in that case you know if the patient is is expecting a perfection, and you know if, if the patient is so obsessive, the that patient don't want doesn't want to yeah. get operated by. Yeah. Yeah. So Let's they go it. away. So you and it's good. It's that good. Way. Way. That's, it's good because yeah. I think when you're at the start of your career, if someone walks through the door uh, requesting yeah. a rhinoplasty, they're going to get the rhinoplasty. Yeah. But now when you're so experienced and you like taking so much longer to operate, you actually can be so selective. Yeah. That's very clever. Yeah. Because you know I don't want to have more stress yeah. in my life. Yeah. When you get old, I'm over sixty right now, yeah. so I don't want to. Take no. a stress. Uh, no, I, yeah, I, you know, yeah. that doesn't mean that uh, I don't do uh, difficult cases. I I operate the most difficult ones. Absolutely. Yeah. But they're but, mentally the right patients yeah. to operate on. Yeah. That's the and difference. I, I also, I explain a lot, you know. To, yeah. I, I tell that, you know, I will do an improvement, but don't expect an outstanding result and uh, so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. The, when they see the result better than I promise, they are, they are more happy now. Wow. That's a kind of prevention more. No, no, it's very myself. clever. Eh? Okay, so the last thing I want to ask you about. So you've been in this game for like 30 years. Yeah. Where do you see rhinoplasty going over the next period? Well, I, I lived to uh, different... Uh, you know, eras in the rhinoplasty world. Yes. You know, when I first started uh, to do this operation, everything was closed rhinoplasty. Yeah. Then open rhinoplasty, you know, started. Yes. There was a big debate between the open and closed surgeon, yeah. the rhinoplasty surgeons. Then, uh, then open structural rhinoplasty started with the overgrafting. Mm-hmm. We put graft everywhere, mm-hmm. and then we realize that there's a lot of problems due to this yes, graft. Yes, yes, yes. Now the uh, the last thing is the uh, right now the preservation, uh, dorsal preservation uh, is becoming more popular. I'm 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 I can say that right now only you know, just a few percent of the uh, surgeons in all over the world are doing the yes. dorsal preservation. Yes. You know, in the meetings, you know, almost half of the talks about the dorsal preservation, yeah. but yeah. it's it's not spread it, uh, that much. No, it's not. Eh? Uh, I think it's sometimes just a cool thing to say, but yeah. it's not as common. Eh? It's not yeah. as common. Yeah. 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 So uh, we will see the long term results of this technique. I'm, uh, I'm not. Saying that uh, that's a bad technique, that's a good technique, good evaluation, but it's not the technique for everybody, uh, for every patient, the, in my opinion. Uh, and I, I I want to know the long term uh, results about this yeah. technique. Yeah. Of course, there are uh, you know uh, good indications for this method. But you know we ha- we have yeah. to know the uh, structural techniques. In my philosophy, uh, what I know that uh, our Bible must be the anatomy, the normal anatomy. Yes. And at the surgery, we should read. Uh, we should uh, try to get a result similar to the. Uh, normal anatomy or op- yes. optimal anatomy yes. when yes. we correct the deformities. Yes. 
So uh, to me, the some techniques uh, which are non-anatomical is not logical. Yeah. Even though they are very much popularized. Yeah. You know, there are some methods. For example, in my opinion, uh, recently the septal extension graft is overused. Yes. yes. You know, in 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 a patient in an Asian nose, it's a must. Yeah. Because the you have to elongate the nose. Yes. yes. In a secondary case, it's a must. Yeah. But for the uh, tip positioning, you know, there are other methods in many cases. You know, instead of the septal extension graft, but it's became a kind of you know the routine method by yeah. Yeah. some people. Yeah. Also, I'm questioning the, about the, you know, the tip sutures, for example. Now we are stealing from ladder cura too much. Yes. You know, some surgeons. Yeah. Yeah. And it became popular because, you know, I see the uh, results in Insta, uh, Instagram. Yeah. You know, every surgeon is doing, uh, is overprojected noses with uh, too much rotation, uh, uh, yeah. rotation yeah. too much ladder cura still. This is not anatomic and this is not natural. This is not nice, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So, uh, this will change on time. Yeah. You know, this, the, this era is the, now we are at the era of the social media. Yes. Social media, a kind of direct us to do that, yes. particularly young colleagues. Yes. You know, because there are some uh, famous surgeons who has a lot of patients, and they are promoting this, yeah. uh, these techniques, and the youngs are following them yeah. because the other surgeons are very successful. Yeah. They just imitate these yeah. successful uh, surgeons, yeah. and uh, then uh, these methods also were asked by the patients. Yeah. So these are not uh, good things. For example, as I told you, as I gave an example, you know, the, we are putting too much tip sutures. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And yes. Too, too much sharpening of the tips. This yes. is not anatomic. When I look at, when I open a nose with a nice tip, I never see that sharp diamond shape, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, sure. It's a lot of, I, 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 there's so much wisdom in what you've said. Yes. I've got to listen to all of this stuff again. Eh? Yeah. Wow. Um, gee, I, I'm kind of almost lost for words listening to this. Yeah. So, so, Prof, I've got a last question that I want to ask you. is: What yeah. is it like being president of ISAPS? Well, it was a great honor and a pleasure for me. Uh, I worked for, for this society uh, 16 years as wow. a board of directors. And uh, four years, I was the chair of uh, education council and traveled so many countries. I organized 45 meetings in all over the world in four years and traveled all of them. Wow. And uh, it was fun. And it was uh, so uh, nice and so satisfying for me uh, to teach somebody because I enjoy teaching very much. And I have... Too many fellows from all over the world. They are coming, still coming and observing my surgeries. When they become a uh, good surgeon, when they present in the meetings, I I just uh, proud of them. And uh, that's a that's a great uh, you know uh, great satisfaction for me. ISEPS is a very uh, you know. Good society, nice society, because it's scientific, non-commercial. Yeah. You know, uh, today you know that there are some, you know, businesses who organize the meetings mm-hmm. and there's a lot of bias on those, meet, you know, meetings. ISEPS uh, is the biggest international society. The goal is the safe aesthetic education mm-hmm. worldwide. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, you know, during my term, uh, the number of the members uh, increased 50%. And uh, wow. last September, uh, we had a meeting in Istanbul Congress, uh, ISEPS Congress, which was very successful uh, with 2,500 2, participants, uh, 
for the plastic surgery world it was That's huge, was yeah. huge and wow. with a very very high scientific quality yeah. also the social program was very good and i i really uh, you know enjoyed very much uh, to be president of this society yeah. and also i enjoyed very much to contribute to science yeah. Yeah. Here yeah. in the world yeah. because uh, as physicians i believe that you know we have to contribute to science as well as the peace of the world because we got to yeah. be together you Absolutely. know in the science there is no politics yeah and yeah. i wanted to give a message as human we are equal Yeah. in every country you know yeah. To, yeah. as plastic surgeons yeah. we are equal yeah. yeah actually we are equal Absolutely. and you know in ICEPs we get together yes in the international societies we get together as equal uh, plastic surgeons yeah. yeah and this is a message and uh, so if if I could contribute a little bit to the uh, peace in the <laughs> in the world yes. Because you know the poli- politicians ah. in the world, you know they are, ah. they, they, no. you know they, they are not they, no, they are no. not as good as we are. You no, know, no, let's not talk about them. Eh? Yeah, sure. So, well, I'm sure there are a lot of listeners on the podcast who've who've heard you from around the world, and it's I guess it's my my privilege to say thank you on behalf of everybody yeah. for your time. And really, yeah. Prof, it's it's inspiring to sit here and listen and and just um, like get a glimpse of of who you are and and what drives you. So thank you very much for your time. Eh? Yeah, it was a pleasure, Cameron. Thanks for having me in your podcast. And uh, so, so guys, come back next week for another episode of okay. the Ryan Crosby <laughs> Podcast. <laughs>